The cannon absolutely blows the Nikon D850 out of the water. This surprised me. Today is a big day. The battle between the D850 and the 5D Mark IV. No, not really. Right, so uh, as I'm sure a couple of you, or most of you hopefully are aware, a couple of weeks ago I got to get my hands on a Nikon D850. Now for those of you that are new to the channel, um, I am a landscape photographer, I travel a lot, I shoot a lot of landscapes, and I've been using a Canon 5D Mark IV for a good couple of years before that I had the 5D Mark III, um, but recently I've been exploring the idea of is there a better camera out there for me, something that's going to improve the image quality of my photograph, something that's going to make my life easier and uh, so on and so forth. So I've decided over the next couple of months to try uh, as many cameras as I can try. Cameras that I would consider buying. Um, and the first of these cameras that I would consider buying and switching to from the Canon is the Nikon D850. And in this video, I'm going to answer the question, will the Nikon D850 be my next camera? So I, uh, I'm very fortunate, very fortunate to have such a fantastic audience as you guys. And when you have an audience on social media, it's very easy to contact marketing departments of camera manufacturers and get loaners of cameras. These are cameras that they give to the press and stuff and people to review. And more often than not, if you have a YouTube channel, they'll say, yes, you can borrow this camera for a couple of weeks because it's great exposure for them. So I am taking advantage of this. Um, but I massively, massively appreciate that not everybody is in this position. Um, and the thing is, the problem with photography is I think we can all agree it's a it's massively expensive as, as a hobby a hobby it's ridiculous like and there are no other hobbies out there that are this expensive if you want to buy even just a mid-range camera even just an entry-level camera it's thousands of pounds if you want to go high-end you know you can easily drop 10 grand on a couple of lenses and a body and a few accessories so my Nikon D850, that was a rental camera, and that was from hireacamera.com. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I want to advise anybody who may be thinking of upgrading or making that massive financial investment, um, you really, I would advise you to rent a camera. Um, and the reason for this is well, it's, there's a few reasons. Uh, one is it's such a big financial investment, uh, you need to really hold it in your hands and see how it works and how it feels for you, but you can't rely only on data and, uh, and DxO marks and graphs, you know. Not all of these translate in the real world, as this video might demonstrate. I'm just saying, so if you want to stick with me, there's some interesting results. Um, another reason, another reason for renting a camera is that it's, you just, right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on, and I'm on the internet, and I'm gonna search for Nikon Z7 Review. If they have to have mirrorless today, I would not recommend this camera, because it is a rather lovely piece of kit. Anyone starting a new system from scratch should really carefully compare Sony's Mark III bodies. Now to put it up against the Sony A7R III is more of a challenge. Overall, the camera's got great weather sealing, it's rugged, I mean, it's a really, really well-designed and thoughtful camera. Because the camera sucks. You see, you can't, the only way you can decide if a camera's right for you is to hold it in your hands, shoot with it how you would shoot with it, use it how you would use a camera, and relatively speaking, hiring a camera is a very safe way to do that, um, and relatively, inexpensive compared to the massive investment that you're going to make and that is that is legitimate advice that I would give anybody either I'll borrow it off a mate um, or see if you can wangle one from a manufacturer but it's not always easy unless you have um, an audience so the D850 will it be my next camera 
it's it's up there as a possible contender. Obviously, I'm not going to make a definitive decision because I've got many other cameras to try, but I am certainly not ruling out the D850. Now, one of the problems I had whilst I had the D850 is that the conditions I shot with, with the D850, were not challenging conditions. It was beautiful, it was misty, it was gorgeous. I got some of the best images I've had in a while on that photo shoot. If you haven't seen the video, um, I'll link to it here. I'll also stick a link in the description below. You can go and watch that video. Um, but yeah, it wasn't challenging. Any camera would have handled that perfectly. The problem here is that I, I wasn't able to really put the D850 to the test. So so um, I went out again and I shot uh, a couple of test shots. Uh, one image uh, was just to test the resolution and just see if you can really notice in the real world the difference between a 30 megapixel camera and a 45 megapixel camera. The second image I shot was horrendous. Um, it was in the woods looking through the trees straight into the sun. So you've got massive, massive dynamic range huge contrast issues um, and also I wanted to see how the Nikon versus the Canon, I wanted to see how it res would resolve the fine detail of all of those twigs and branches overlapping with the direct sunlight behind it. That scene in the woods was incredibly challenging. To be fair, you'd probably never really shoot anything that difficult. Um, all images uh, Side by side was shot using the exact same settings and the exact same focal length, so it's completely even. And the results were not surprising, and then they were surprising. So let's take a look. So when I look at this file uh, shot with the D850 and the 5D Mark IV, um, if I look at them individually, uh, I can't really see a difference. I don't, I don't look at the Canon file and think, ooh, and then look at the Nikon file and be like, wow. Um, there isn't that, right, really, real world, there isn't that much of a difference. It's not like driving a, a Vauxhall Astra and then getting in a Porsche 911. It's like, whoa, it's just, they're both good files. They're both crisp, they're both clean. However, when you compare them side by side, there is a noticeable difference between the D850 and the 5D Mark IV. The D850 is crisper, cleaner, and a heck of a lot sharper. If you look at the detail, let's look at the fence down here. Look at, you can see every single wire of the fence on the D850. On the Canon 5D Mark IV, the fence isn't as sharp. You can't see as much detail there. And that is down to two things. One, the resolution, and two, the fact that the D850 does not have an anti-aliasing filter, whereas the Canon does. So in most situations, and most photographers, you're not gonna ever, ever see the difference of those megapixels um, unless you're pixel peeping, uh, which I like to do. Um, there's only one real situation where you are going to see the difference, real world difference, and that is when you print. And even then, you have to print large to see the difference. So I wanted to test that. So the biggest prints I can make here in my office are A2 prints. So I printed both images here. Now, um, you wouldn't see a difference at A2, um, so I didn't bother printing the entire image. What I did was I cropped in by 50%, and then I printed the image, and that gives me uh, essentially, by cropping in about 50% and printing on A2, that gives me the equivalent of a much bigger print, like a 40 by 30 or, or an A1 or something like that. So I cropped in quite a lot and then printed it. And as soon as the pr these rolled off the printer, rolled off the press, I didn't even need to look up close. I could see straight away that there was a massive difference. The Nikon file produces a l far better print. Um, you know, at the large size. So if you're printing regularly, if you're printing large 40 by 30 prints, something like that, uh, there is a noticeable improvement with the Nikon file. It's crisper, cleaner, sharper than the Canon file. But again, I don't look at the Canon print and say, oh, that's a bit soft. Um, but then I do look at the Nikon print and think, wow, I can see every single brick <laughs> in that church. So yeah, if you're printing large, Nikon D850 hands down wins. Now what surprised me was when I opened the files shot in the woodland, the dank dark woodland. Everything's the same, every setting's the same, everything, same focal length, same aperture, same f-stop, same, same ISO, everything identical. They were shot 20, 30 seconds. How, how long does it take me to switch cameras? 
like 20 seconds, they were shot 20 seconds apart. And I did this to test the dynamic range and I was waiting for the Nikon to just blow me away. It didn't happen. Now, what I have to say is these are not lab test conditions and that's the whole point of this video and me trying these cameras is that lab tests don't mean anything because we don't shoot images in labs and I know it sounds stupid, but this Im these images prove that not everything translates to the real world. First of all, we're gonna drop the highlights and lift the shadows to see that dynamic range. And the Canon looks better. And that's, I was just not expecting it. But look at how the Canon has resolved the twigs and the trees where it interacts with those bright highlights. You can see all of the twigs and the branches. They're sharp, they're crisp, they're clean. But let's go down into the shadows. It's sharp, it's crisp, it's rich in contrast and detail. Now let's look at the Nikon file. Those twigs in the highlights in the sky, they're, 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 they're blurry and they've not been resolved and they're, they're, they don't, they look horrendous, there's chromatic aberration everywhere and when you go down into the shadows they look muddy and dirty and it's not crisp and sharp like the Canon and there is a huge difference and to look at these two files side by side, the Canon absolutely blows the Nikon D850 out of the water. This surprised me. But I will say this was not a lab test and they're not really comparable because there was a quick changeover so maybe something happened. Maybe I missed focus, maybe I messed up, maybe there was a bit of camera shake although looking at the files it doesn't look like there was any camera shake. And I think that it's down to the lenses which is a massive factor when buying a camera. Canon's lenses are superb, they are without a doubt the best or you know up there with the best lenses on the market um, and I think when sh in, when really tested at f14 shooting straight into the sun trying to resolve all of that detail um, and at the widest focal point of the lens which was 24 mil I think the Canon glass handled it so much better than the Nikon glass and this kind of messed me up a bit because I was expecting the Nikon to win in all these tests and all along I'd be thinking why have I been shooting with a Canon 5D Mark IV and not a Nikon um, and it just goes to show that it's not always the case. There is more to a camera than meets the eye. There is more to a camera than a DxO chart and I think a lot of that is the lenses and this has to be taken into consideration. Um, so it's got me, this little, little tiny test I did has got me questioning everything. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing a massive difference between the images, although I am seeing a difference, but it's not huge, it's not like life changing. Um, and when tested, old reliable here, old faithful, came through and just showed me why he's been my faithful partner for so many years. <laughs> it's crazy. So I think what these uh, couple of images prove, um, but more than anything, is that no matter how good a camera is supposed to be, it's only as good as the person behind the camera taking the image. I may have messed up the Nikon test shot. I may have knocked it. I may have missed my focus. I, I don't know. Um, but it, all that does is prove that no matter how good the camera is, you know, if you're a crap photographer, <laughs> It's not going to work, you know, it's not going to improve your photography. So that is so important when spending that kind of money to know that a better camera won't improve your photography. Uh, so this test has been enlightening and uh, I have to say that I thought I would be falling out of love with the 5D Mark IV, but absolutely not. Um, it's held its own and has really got me considering um, the switch and if it's going to happen. So I am trying more cameras and it's fun to try different cameras. I am enjoying this so uh, let's not forget that. You know, photography is all about having fun as well. So uh, the next camera I'll be getting my hands on will be a Fujifilm GFX 50R. This is a camera I've wanted for a long time and that is going to be interesting and I'm looking forward to going out and shooting with the Fujifilm, I'm looking forward to looking at the files and talking about it and seeing if the Canon can hold its own against medium format. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. But um, there we go. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. Please take it easy on the comments. Uh, we shouldn't all be so brand loyal. It's, remember, it's about photography and not the gear. Uh, that's what I think. So, uh, Nikon versus Canon, who cares? 
who cares? Um, it's all about going out and uh, taking nice images and having a great time and meeting good people. Um, and yeah, this this has been a, a surprising result, so I'm going to leave it on that bombshell. Uh, to answer the question, I think I've already answered it, I'm not sure, but I'll answer it again. Will the Nikon D850 be my next camera? I'm not saying no, but I'm also not going to say yes, obviously, because I have many more cameras to try. Um, but it's been fun, and it's been interesting, and I think real-world situations don't translate to those chart DxO scores. So yeah, there we go. Take it easy in the comments, guys, please. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. So until then, bye for now.